If we want to understand how people and how animals see and how they think and how they make decisions, we need to understand some of the machinery of the brain as it goes through the motion. Just like if you want to understand a computer, you can't just sort of look at a static wiring diagram of the computer. You need to understand the flow of information or you know, how the charge is shuttled among the various transistors. That's how our brain works and so we need to observe that as it happens. Paul Allen started the Allen Institute for Brain Science specifically to start to crack the really hard problem of how does the brain work. The Allen Brain Observatory is the latest installment in trying to tackle that level of complexity in biology. The Allen Brain Observatory is to biology what an astronomical observatory is to astronomy. It's a very complex set of tools and instruments backed by a large number of scientists and engineers and, and highly trained technicians that observe on a highly standardized condition the brain in action. So in essence it's a catalog of activity in the mouse's brain. We're imaging the activity of hundreds of cells at a time when the mouse is seeing a bunch of different images, movies, different types of patterns of light, and looking at the activity of different cells that are in the visual cortex. When you get these recordings, it's not just videos of cells firing. We're actually getting a glimpse into the types of information that the cells are processing, and in this case, it's visual information. It was really important that we include natural images, natural movies, to capture some of those dynamic processes. And so we have a collection of about 120 images for the natural scenes that have some pictures of animals, some pictures of you know street scenes. But the key thing is that they're kind of highly varied. And then our natural movie, we were looking for something that had a lot of different types of motion, but we wanted something that was continuous, so we weren't going to have lots of movie cuts and things like that. When you're looking at the data that we have on the website, you are looking at representations of individual cells responding to visual information presented to the animal. How it all comes together, that's going to take an entire community of people also looking at the data with us. All of the hard steps that went into collecting the data, processing it, registering it, have already been completed and the data is available in a very nice compact package called the NeuroData Without Borders file form. Format. And so when an external person comes to our website and they want to start doing analysis, beyond just looking at the beautiful figures, they will download this file. It has all of the information nicely packaged and greatly lowers the barrier for getting into the data set. This website is great. Like, it really is great. When I first saw the, the you know, the, the very first, like, rough edit of the web page. I just spent hours just like going from one page to the next, looking from one cell to the next, and I just, you know, one of my colleagues walked by and was just like, why do you look so excited? And it was like, this is just amazing. We have people who are just outstanding engineers, outstanding computational scientists, basic neurobiologists, people who are working with animals, people who are working with microscopes, people who are working with helping us communicate the data to others and visualizing data in new ways. You need many different people they all have to work together in a very tight team and just like in a rowing boat you have to get the set of the boat right and so it's fantastic to finally see it coming to fruition in this uh, spectacular manner. We started with very reductionist approaches to looking at where genes were turned on in the brain. That led us to specific genes which were turned on which gave us a genetic handle on cell types. Now we're able to start to build resources in which we can see those cell types in action. So step by step piece by piece, we're building on top of additional resources we've created in the past to start to tell this story about how information is processed in the brain. You will never understand the brain without seeing what it does. The flip side is you'll never understand the brain unless you know its anatomy and you know its development, you know the molecules that are important, but it's the activity of neurons, of course, that we're all interested in. It's the second to second, millisecond to millisecond activity of the brain that is its job and it's really, frankly, what makes us, us. Well, ultimately, I want to understand how my own consciousness arrives because ultimately you have to remember the only way I know about the world, the only way I know about anything is my own conscious experience and I want to understand that and the one way to do it is to observe that in action, to see the neural lace switching in, in, in real time and that's what we're doing here. For me it changes how I interact with data. I'm excited about that being out in the world, about people using it in that way and I hope that it will kind of catch on a little bit. I think that. 
um, sharing data in this way and visualizing data and interacting with data is really important and really valuable. And it's been a lot of hard work. There have been a lot of people involved, a lot of different moving pieces. Um, it's just really exciting to, you know, just be able to show that off and really celebrate that. So.